Hello guys, welcome back to the channel, it's our live for set play gaming. Today we have a FIFA 21 Ultimate YSL tutorial. Um, this is something that's been requested, it's bonus content this weekend on the channel. Something that got requested on the Facebook page. Um, you can find the link to my social media in the description below. Uh, but this is something that somebody requested and um, I thought, you know, I've been wanting to do a tutorial for a while. Um, I think quite a lot of YouTubers have already covered this, but again, it's just the way that I do it. And today I'm going to be covering the most common way of doing a YSL save. Um, some people prefer to use Academy only. Some people prefer to use the traditional method of using both Academy and generated players from the free agency and other teams. I will cover that. Now, the first thing that we're going to get into straight away is which team shall you pick? Um, and again, this dependent on country, but the main thing that you want to look at is board expectations. You want them to be as minimal as possible. The priority should be low or very low. And I'm just showing you a couple of teams here off the bat that have domestic success of very low expectations. Um, and the reason for that is because when you, inevitably, when you replace your original team um, of players, you transfer list them or release them, and you bring in a load of academy, the main, the first crop of academy players are going to be very poor. So you are going to struggle at the very, very beginning. And the, the point of it is, is that your expected, the board's expectations and your expectations should be very low. And that means if you're at the bottom end of the league, it's not going to matter too much. Um, you can see that some of these, like Morecambe, they have a high financial objective. We'll get to that in a minute. But for the most part, for the purpose of this save, I'm going to pick Barrow. Um, they're obviously a very low ranked team in League 2. And I guess some of this doesn't really matter. I'll we'll choose Sterling and strict negotiations, but the pre season tournament doesn't really matter either. Um, for the most part, at the beginning, while you're trying to focus on building your academy, um, you're basically going to be simming through most of those. You can play them if you want, but you're going to have the majority of it. You're going to be having, um, you know, uh, the original players. And that's kind of not really what you do on this save. Um, so a YSL save is essentially, a FIFA 21 YSL save is essentially um, a save different from just buying regular, you know, career mode players to build the best team. You use the academy to build your team instead. And the first thing that I do is go to the Global Transfer Network and I instruct all my scouts to ignore the previous instructions and only one instruction which is to look for promising players between the ages of 16 and 19. And in the first year it doesn't really matter because they're going to be real players. But in the second year you'll see that um, generated players come through the other teams and then those generated players will be similar to the academy players and you can take a look at them and maybe uh, take one or two. The next part is you go to your own academy and you take what you can get. We're going to take Valencia and Corona. We can't take Lebedev because he's 15. But we've already got two players in. And it looks like they are central midfielders. So that means that we'll be able to release some midfielders within uh, the original squad. The next bit, you're going to go over to the free agency. You're going to look again for 16 to 19 year olds. This time you're going to look at uh, free agents. That's uh, players without a club. You can see we've already got a goalkeeper, a left winger who I think is going to have to play striker. You uh, are Apo Yuronen and uh, Anu Dan Sangu. Now Sangu is a real player, but for the purpose of this save, just to sort of show you an example, um, I'm going to play him at right back. I think for the purpose of this save, with him being under 21, I'll pick him. Um, but usually I wouldn't use him because, like I said, he's a real player. Um, but it's just to give an idea of how, how to do how to do it. Now, as I said, these first crop of games in the tournament, they aren't really that important. Um, so you're just going to basically sim through. Um, you're looking to basically just get established and get everything done at the beginning. Um, the first thing that you're going to want to do once you've done those few things, um, you're going to want to um, sim um, over to the, the beginning of the tournament. And then once you've done that, you're going to want to go over to your squad and you're going to want to put in the players that you've just brought in. You're also going to want to transfer list anybody that's in that position. Now, as we saw with Morecambe before, 
they had a low domestic objective but they had a high financial objective one of the tricks that i do here to stay on the board side is the players that you transfer listing should be prioritized by their value so you pick all the best players first and transfer list them and what that does generates a lot of capital and if they say for example your objective for finance is to retain 1.7 million you're going to earn that back in player sales almost instantly so just keep that in mind if you're at a club like Morecambe where they have a low domestic objective because even if you're not doing very well domestically which is the case with the YSL save you will be on the board side because you have you know met the requirements of the financial objective and that's all you basically want to do at the beginning of the season is stay on the board side so that you can stay in the job long enough to bring in your academy players so the next thing you're going to want to do of course is to send out your scouts you know you can't have an academy where your scout just sat there doing nothing drinking cups of tea now with the the main thing is is at the beginning i like to have one star scouts this is completely your decision but if you're in league two you have the lowest ranked scouts and you send them to i send them to the home home nations this is completely at your discretion i know lots of people that go all over the world and it's completely your decision to do that but for me i have a tiered system that means i can only go to the uh, the home countries at the beginning and then as I progress up the ranks of each league I then open up more countries that's something that you can do if you want to um, you can take that idea if you want um, I find it, it it's more realistic at the beginning just to have uh, those players in the beginning as you can see these um, scout reports came through at the beginning of August and we already have a crop of players that we can take a look at and this one here from uh, Northern Ireland We've got Kevin Cassidy and Connor Wilson, they're both 17, so they're eligible to be brought straight in. And we also have Oliver Powell, who's a defensive bid. Now, because we signed Jeronen, um I think one of those are going to have to play centre-back, because we already have a defensive midfielder. Um, and in many ways, the system that Barrow are playing, I don't think has a defensive mid anyway. The more central midfielders, so... We'll have to take a look at that and shuffle around some players. But you get the general idea. Now you might find in the course of your early career mode save, <clears throat> you might have a situation where, um, you know, again, it, it's about perpetuating the idea that we're struggling, you know, and we're going to struggle for a while. And so you're not always going to be able to identify players in the positions you want. And for that reason, you might have to retrain um players in different positions um, and that again that lends to the idea that you're struggling at the beginning and um, you'll basically say right well I've got four defensive mids two of them are going to have to sit in midfield and the other two are going to have to play centre back because that's what the team needs and we've got to do what's best for the team and um, it's great you know like it, the, the idea of a career mode save is that you should look at longevity you should look at making it in your own mind you want to be as creative as possible and um, enjoy the save because in the beginning you will struggle um, and um, that's the whole point of the save is that you start at the bottom you find it hard to get wins because you've got players that are low ranked and then as those players get experience and they they work their way up you decide later on are you going to keep pushing that player and developing him or are you going to find a, a different different academy player to bring in in his replacement um, that's all part of the fun of the save really but as you can see um, we're just uh, shuffling a couple of players around here and as you can see with the two strikers up front Pay and Valencia if you remember Pay was a left winger but we turned him into a striker again it just um, shows you that you're basically scraping the bottom of the barrel when it comes to collecting players at the beginning um, it's not easy and um, you know you're going to be basically starting from scratch and then once you do that and you've got your first 11 you're going to want to do the same thing you're going to want to repeat the process so you'll send your scouts out again uh, if you're scouting the home countries you might think well you've got england you've got scotland you've got northern ireland and then you might leave the english save open and tell them to go back to england and then you might switch scotland and northern ireland up for republic of ireland and wales and you might do that for three months and then come back again. Um, so you can just switch it for the first year and just only stay in those countries. Again, I do have it of a more tiered structure. So once we've been in League 2, 
and you start to open up a couple more countries but the mainly the the northern regional countries like Norway and, and, and stuff like that um, they've added a couple more Eastern European countries this year which makes things a little bit more interesting you don't always have to have Belgium Netherlands and Switzerland you can go to Albania now um, you can go to um, I think the other country that they included was um, Belarus was it Belarus I think was another one anyway um, so once you've once you've created your first 11, you're basically going to send your scout out and look for a second 11 to make your entire 22 to 25 man squad of academy players. And as you can see, I'm in the beginning of September, so I've really been only going about a month um, and I already have a first 11. So going into the, the beginning of the season, you know, I haven't had to do a whole lot of work to get this first 11 in. The, the, the hardest part, I think, is probably just trying to get it so that you have a second 11, but you don't struggle to meet the demands of the fixtures that you're playing. So again, this can be done a number of ways. You can withhold 11 original players and use them as backup emerg emergency players. Or, like in the past, you can turn injuries off and just have the very, very bare minimum. Um... <coughs> Some people don't prefer to play games that have the original players in, so you can basically just sim to a loss if you want. Um, I'm going to sim a game here. You can see that I've moved Euronen from defensive mid over to centre back alongside Powell. And as you can see, that is a full first 11 now going into the game against Walsall. I'm just going to sim that one. What I want you guys to do is um, post in the comments and I want you to tell me is there anything specifically that you do differently on your academy save? Is there a routine that you always do? Is there a country that you always must scout regardless of which team you pick? Um, do you usually avoid doing League 2 and go somewhere else like Austria or Switzerland? You know, let me know in the comments. Is there anything that I've glaringly missed out? Um, Point it out in the description below and just let me know in the comments. Say, look, you know, it's a great tutorial, but you miss this out. You know, let me know if there's something that I've missed. Um, and uh, I want to hear your guys' suggestions as well. Is there anything you think that EA could do to improve a YSL save? Um, is there any countries that they've missed out that you'd like to see? Just stuff like that. And um, yeah, I mean, if you're enjoying the content, I hope you enjoyed this bonus content because this is something that I enjoy creating content for the channel. Um, and if you have any other suggestions or uh, requests on what tutorials you'd like to see me do next, then pop that in the comments as well. Basically, anything's fair game in the comments. Have at it. Um, I'm looking to try and sort of expand the community and make sure that people get involved and enjoy it. So by all means, let me know. Um, and I'll be certainly of listing ears. We're just going through the rest of the players here, transfer listing them. And again, this is just to show you the process of how to do the YSL save. And they've become quite popular in the last decade. People love to play these because, like I said, usually if you start out as a top team like Liverpool or City, you've got all the money, you've got all the best players, and within one, two seasons, you've already won the Champions League. And there isn't... Everybody loves an underdog, you know, and this, this, this save really comes from that kind of um that makeup that genetic makeup of the save is uh, the underdog story you know the rags to riches the road to glory uh, that kind of thing um and i think that's why people love the save so what we're going to do is we're just going to show you a quick example of the youth academy in action in this cheltenham save and uh yeah i've enjoyed making this tutorial for you guys i want you to let me know um, if there's anything else that you'd like me to cover and anything that I might have missed out, you'll see here Pay sends a long ball over to Valencia, who then plays in Forster, and he gets wiped out by the goalie here uh, for Cheltenham. The ref waves play on and Corona sticks it in the back of the net. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can still play some good football with the academy guys. You just can't play Real Madrid style football, that's it, um, until the players get better. If you've enjoyed this, smash a like and uh, please continue to support me. I'll see you guys soon.